Hello and welcome back to the 4 NCL. Uh, this is a tournament that I've played before, so if you checked out the channel you might be aware of this, but if you're not, this is a tournament that's played uh, once every two weeks. Uh, so there might not be a stream of games like there are normally, uh, but I will update the, the videos or the, this channel as I play. Um, this is, I'm playing for my previous club. Uh, they field three teams I think we have, and this was played on the second team. Originally I wasn't actually meant to be playing, uh, but a few hours before the game started, uh, just because we we have too many players for the amount of teams that we have. Uh, my captain said that we didn't have enough people, so I needed to sub in. Um, so yeah, this was a bit last minute, but, uh, but a good game nonetheless. So my opponent is, I put a P because he's provisional up there, so perhaps he just hasn't really uh, played much <laughs> over the board. I don't know if he plays online or anything like that. Um, so, and like these events, you have about an hour to prepare for your opponent, so it's not really worth preparing in my mind. And often, most of the time, you can't really tell what your opponent plays anyway so really it was just turn up and see what they play uh, but i got the white pieces which is quite nice and i start off with one knight of three as i do he plays d5 i play d4 uh, i play e uh, he plays e6 i play c4 i've included the sounds into the game now <laughs> hopefully it's a bit more uh, aesthetic, like aesthetic audio pleasing. Uh, knight f6, g3, playing the Kassan, this is what I go for. And in this position, there are three main moves, but he actually plays knight bb d7. Uh, this is not a bad move by any means. Um, I guess you could call it a bad move because he's sort of committing to the kind of setup that he's going for, and it doesn't leave flexibility, but this is completely playable. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, bishop g2 c6 signifying these going to the closed catalan he could have played here bishop e7 and gone into some more open lines but he went for c6 going for the closed now this the closed catalan i think is probably the number one reason why to play the catalan uh i find this is the most common response to the catalan at my level and a lot of the time black doesn't know how to play it and they often even without making serious mistakes will get into a much worse position and it's just so much easier for white to play so after castles, uh, my opponent plays bishop e7, and the key idea of the closed castan is to wait to develop the queen before the, the bishop goes to e7. So for example, if he had played bishop d6 here, this is the move that you need to be aware of. Instead of playing queen c2, which probably is still playable, but I think knight c3 is actually the more accurate move, because after castles, again, instead of playing queen c2, you have this nice move, knight uh, fd2 and the point of it is then we're going to push for e4 and normally when the trade happens on e4 uh, you're going to be left with a queen here but in this case because you've over defended with a knight you're going to be left with a knight and then the knight will be hitting the bishop on d6 and this is a minute uh, sort of difference but it really does make the position much nicer for white to play and um, it sort of punishes black for trying to be aggressive with bishop d6 hence why you need to wait for the queen move before the bishop moves so bishop moves now queen c2 and here, my opponent, uh, he played an odd move. Um, and again, I think part of the reason why I love playing against the Coast Catalan is people don't really, they're not particularly sure what they're doing. Now, my opponent's move isn't game losing, but really the most natural move in the move you should just play is Castle. And it's surprising how the Castlan is known as a positional opening, how really the position, uh, this <laughs> sounds bad, but how the position, I just said it wasn't positional opening, but how the position just really does suck with black if you don't play them the right moves. And it can become very tactical, and it turns, sort of, it has that E4 opening uh, ideal behind it, of just like crushing your opponent out of the opening rather than sort of the D4 slow maneuvering kind of idea. Because my opponent didn't castle here, he actually played knight BD6, which is, yeah, a bit suspect. Uh, I just developed the knight here. It goes to bd2 to help support c4 and also e4. It's just a common idea. You're not really sad about this bishop. This bishop is the worst piece of the castle, and it's still an okay piece, and we'll probably trade it off at some point. He plays queen c7, again not trading, which is just a bit odd, so I decide to go to the center. This is what the computer says was my inaccuracy of the game. I should play b3, which does make sense, because it sort of... Um, Clamps down on the square that knight can go, helps support the center, but knight e5 is completely natural moving the castle, and I think it's completely fine here. He decides to take. Uh, I took back, he took back, and I took back with the knight. Often, if you can take on c4 with a queen or a knight, it's often better to take with a knight. And especially in this position, uh, because what my opponent plays next, I think, is the losing move of the game. And uh, just to put it on the board, is bishop d7. Now, this doesn't look completely terrible on the offset, but this is now completely losing for black, I think. And 
yeah, black really doesn't have any moves to play after white's next move. If you want to pause the video just to see the crushing move for white. Uh, but the crushing move for white is to exploit the dark squares and play bishop f4. Uh, you can't block with this bishop because I'll just take and win a piece. So, oh, sorry. So the queen has to go back. I mean, it could go here or here. It doesn't really matter either way. So the queen goes back. Uh, but then you uh, trade the bishop for the knight. So you check, take back, and bishop takes. And this bishop is now a monster. You can't castle. So really, you should have been castling earlier if you were black. And also, this bishop is terrible because it's just staring at these pawns. The only sort of reasonable piece is this knight. I mean, even your queen's offside, you can't castle, the rooks are in the corner. I've got pretty much everything I want, all my pieces are in place. And despite material being equal, computer sort of to give the evaluation is already plus three. It's just how bad uh, the position is for black. So my opponent played uh, queen d8, just trying to get some control over the square and hopefully maybe castle at some point, but it's not really much to do. I mean... Queen d8 seems like a sad move, but again, what is there to suggest? I mean, if you make any poor moves, then they're just going to be targets for me, and you can't move any of your pieces. So queen d8, uh, e4, just grabbing the center, making sure knight d5 never comes. Uh, queen b6, like getting some activity, I guess. Rook fd1, just defending the pawn. I don't want to push e4, uh, which would come with tempo, but then I would have lost the d5 square, and why give black any sort of <laughs> ideas in this position? He castled queenside, which makes sense. I mean. You are castling into danger, but if you don't play that, what do you play? Um, so castles queenside, a4, just expanding, going after the king. Uh, knight e8, trying to chase away my bishop. Now, I did see in this position that you can win the rook uh, by playing bishop e7, and I think the computer does like this move, but why go after the rook when your position's so nice when this bishop's a complete monster and black doesn't have a duck square bishop? So yeah, bishop c5, gaining a tempo and not trading. Uh, queen moves back, just keep pushing. Uh, I will say in this position, uh, there was an idea that I saw, uh, but I didn't follow it through all the way, in that a4 looks here quite nice, because if the queen goes to this square, then you have bishop f1, which would trap the queen and you'd be winning the queen. Uh, and I was aware that the queen was running out of squares, but the move that I didn't sort of overlook was here, and then I just thought, oh, the queen will escape somewhere, I'm probably still better, but uh, at least black has got something to do rather than me just crushing him. Um, but in this position, I overlooked that bishop c5 is actually really strong because it cuts off the escape, and then bishop f1 with the same idea is really good. But nonetheless, um, bishop c5 is also very good and playable. Uh, queen c7, a5 just grabbing space. Now a6, and <laughs> yeah, my, my poor opponent, and all of these dark squares are completely weak. The queen is the only thing that can really guard against it, and this knight that's covering one or two of the squares. Um, but yeah, here I just get to improve my position even more. I can play bishop b8, b6, sorry. Again, I'm not going to take the rook because, I mean, what is this rook doing? It's completely trapped compared to this bishop. The bishop's amazing. So I just look to open the center. I've got all my pieces pretty much in ideal spots. The only thing is maybe rook c1 would be improving. But I'd, again, don't want to give him too much time to maybe somehow come back into this game. So yeah, just open the center. Um, he brings his knight to block sort of the queen pin. Uh, but now I can just bring my rook in. He takes, and I think, yeah, this, uh, he's already lost, but this just really speeds up the defeat, um, because now when I get to take back, in this position, at least if I took, if I was the one taking, then maybe he'd block with a bishop. Say, for example, uh, I don't know if I'd play a nothing move, and then take here. I, I guess the queen's still hit, but yeah, I, okay, maybe not then, but... Yeah, it's really hard to suggest anything for black. Uh, he took, I took back. Uh, he brought his rook to the file. Again, what else to do? I took, pitting the queen, hitting the bishop, threatening a check here. Yeah, this is pretty much game over. Um, he took my pawn, but yeah, I just take the queen. It does look a complete catastrophe for black, but... Yeah, I'm not sure what to suggest. And then he played a uh, rookie seven. I was actually quite proud of this conversion, so... Uh, that was good. I took the bishop first. I think this is the fastest way, sort of sacking material, but not really just opening up the lines to the king. He takes, I take back. Uh, he brings his other rook into the game as well, but I can check him. Uh, the knight is pinned, so he has to move out of the way. And then after the takes, uh, this is checkmate. Now, I will say there's an interesting position here, is that uh, white is obviously winning. And uh, the computer announces mate in pretty much all lines. But what is the fastest way to mate? And this is a really cool exercise, um, which is quite... It's a weird way of thinking about it. 
So the fastest way to mate isn't actually to go for the checks, is to realize that what black is threatening are rooks down here checking you. Now, these are all bad moves, but it does technically stop the checkmate from being fast. So the fastest move to mate is actually bishop e4, which blocks the lines of the checks, and then you can go in for the tactics and winning. Whereas if you go for any other line, the black will just sacrifice all those pieces, still completely losing. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was cool that bishop e4 is actually the best move there. But I'm not going to beat myself up for and not seeing it. Um, so yeah, actually a really good round for me in round one. If I just sort of scroll down and get the uh, compute analysis, pretty much, yeah, no mistakes apart from maybe knight e4 compared to b3. But otherwise, yeah, just a very solid game. Uh, computer says one in accuracy, 97%. Yeah, um, not too much my opponent could have done after sort of this opening uh, positional mistake of playing uh, bishop d7 but even without bishop d7 it's already quite a nice position for white to play and yeah again why i think the close castellan is such a strong weapon for white because often black doesn't know what they're doing and even if they do they get a quite passive position um so yeah hopefully i'll be back with round two if i'm selected by my team to play if not i'll come back for round three but yeah anyway thanks for watching <laughs>